come, come, come into my shop. Have a look, have a look. So, so what do we have here? We have a static site. And there's three products right here. Uh, water bottles, some beer, and some other water bottles. Now, there is a dynamic component, but this is sort of like generated in advance. Like, for example, the low to high sort of view here, which is always interesting to see on a e-commerce site. And each of these are a static page. And it renders the images and if the, you can even like link a YouTube video in the, in the metadata. So the metadata has the price and the, the date and things like this. Now, what's also pretty interesting is that, is that what is an e-commerce site without like basket functionality? You can add uh, an item from one of the static pages. And if you go and shop around for another thing, you can get like, you can build up a basket of, of different items and then you can check out, right? And this is what the checkout thing looks at, all static, except when we we go to Stripe, the back end, the Stripe, this whole thing is reliant on Stripe, right? So, uh, you know, uh, you just put in some test email, whatever, and a test credit card, just, just so you see the whole flow and Uh, Kai Hendry, and then you pay, and the confirmation I haven't done yet, but that's that's the flow. It's pretty easy. So okay, yeah, you need a Stripe account, and you need uh, a public and a secret key. So yes, I do base this MVP on Hugo, on Stripe, you shopping cart for the basket functionality, which is JavaScript. Um, but I think it's essentially a very, very simple on your part to maintain structure here. So archetypes, let's just, you can ignore that. Assets is where the, the use shopping cart functionality comes in. You can ignore that. Config is what you need to uh, probably change. So content is where you you, you set your you describe your products. And I made it like 2020, I made it like year, year, year. I made it like the year is where you put the products in because the content and the way Hugo works is that you can have different folders and content uh, to give you different views and they have to have a file there. So, so my way of getting around that is just to say years is where the products go. The, the way it integrates with Stripe is that in order for this to work, you need to have some local data about the products, like the SKU on the Stripe side, so that when you check out, you, you must have their SKU. So, so what happens is that we have a, a, a script to push the data from these products marked up here to, to Stripe and then store the Stripe um, data in this data folder. And then that data folder is used to generate the final site. And then the bulk of the work, which which I have done for you, is inside layouts. So hopefully you're inspired by this MIT license. There's a make file, of course. You should be able to fork this. All you need to do is obviously change your um, uh, your N file and your config.toml, and you should be away. And the other stuff you can just ignore. So let's walk through creating a product very quickly. I go into, uh, let's see, am I running out yeah. I go into content, I go into that year structure. So these are my products. Let me just copy an existing product across and let's call it headphones or something like this. So this is the metadata. This is the source of truth. So let's say the, the, um, the headphones are $50. You have to write it in cents. You give it like, a description, the best headphones ever. You describe it, mm, headphones, uh, whatever. You give it a, a day's date, that's this one here. Maybe put it in a category like, mm, what category would this be in? I don't know, like sound or something. This, it doesn't matter, I haven't really 
used uh, categories in sound. I mean, you can probably just resort to using tags. It doesn't mean just fooling around. But the most important thing here is title, date, description, price. And give it a just and then some further stuff here. This is where you can go crazy. This is just markdown here, right? Um, headphones, um, I recommend. So, so there you have it. And if I go over here, I should be able to uh, see a preview of it. So that there, there it is. But I need to sync this with Stripe in order to do a checkout. So let me just clear my cart because I think if you just try checkout, it'll just fail. Yeah, it's failing somehow over here, whatever. Because the SKU is not known, this product is not known to Stripe basically. Very quickly, I go back into my top level directory. I run make. Oh, I deleted uh, <laughs> I deleted the node modules um, so that I could uh, do a clock earlier. So now in this make file, very simply, it runs Stripe sync. And then that populates that data directory I was talking about earlier. So now there's an SKU in there that it can use. And if I go back here, yep, there's an SKU. So now I'm able to check out this, uh, let, let, let's let's do let's add some image just to make it look a, a bit nice. Headphones. Okay, download free. Save file CDX. Okay. <clears throat> so content twenty twenty uh, headphones. You would create a directory like this, and Hugo auto finds the image, which is pretty sweet. So you go downloads a CDX, uh, you know, yellow, whatever. And if I go back to the, the, my site, it should have the headphones and, and, and the image. So add to cart, check out. Now this time it will work because Stripe knows about the product in the back end. You can see um, the products over here, right? This is the inventory management all done on Stripe. Then, uh, as I've shown you before, you purchase it. So here I have a bare bones Hugo site. You should be able to fork it. You should just be able to get going, assuming you have a Stripe account. You've got basket functionality. It's static. You know, Stripe is the only dynamic bit and that's, uh, and that's, um, and, and that's for them to take care of. Otherwise, your single source of truth is those markdown files that I showed you that it's like so simple to create. You can adjust things here, make and deploy. I, it's not perfect yet. I haven't written the code to sync up the, the date and the price if it changes, but I'm working on it. But I think you, you get the gist of it, right? It's very, very simple e-commerce platform that's static. I think that sucks less than um, using, you know, Shopify and WooCommerce's like, you know, web interface. You can basically generate a whole e-commerce site in static files. I'm sure you, you're a power user like I am, just using Markdown and dropping in images and, and, and having everything in Git. Awesome. I just wanted to add that initially I wanted to create um, a Stripe Connect app, but it later turned out that I had to have a dynamic non-static component for it to work. So instead I focused only on this Stripe client only MVP, which I've just shown you. But if you're eager to, to try Stripe Connect, where um, a guy I know in Singapore, Thor, has made an open source Next.js app, because there's, and it requires some dynamism, uh, where you can use Stripe Connect. What does Stripe Connect do that that this that, that client only can't do, or something like this? So with Stripe Connect, you get your vendors, the people you work with, to opt in, and then you create a little substore, so you can effectively legally drop ship, or, or drop ship without taking the money. The money goes to the vendor, 
um, and it's a bit more smooth. The client only um, way of doing that I, that that I just shown you assumes that you are the seller and assumes that you are basically fulfilling the order. With Stripe Connect, you can connect to um, a third party who opts in and they will just simply get the invoice. Does that make sense? So I'm, I wanted to get the MVP doing with uh, the simplest MVP going, which I did. So um, I'm, I'm still probably gonna work on it a little bit in my copious spare time. And you're very welcome to contribute. But if you want the more Stripe Connect way, Unfortunately, it can't be static. So you have to use something like Next.js to, to do this. And I think Thor made a really good start on it. And um, I will probably be uh, working with that. But if you don't want to go the Stripe Connect way and get people to opt in, and you just want to do your own thing and sell your own products, please look at my GitHub project Shopfront. Please like the video, please subscribe, and do comment below what do you think. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye now.